about it. They wanted to kill him. <laughs> Who wanted to kill him? Mm. And we're kind of the last generation that's ever going to remember what it was like before the internet. We're the last generation. Because the kids today, that's just what they know. It's like we know electricity. You know, if you lived a long fucking time ago and electricity came about, it'd be the most magic shit of all time. It's just a very tough road ahead, man. It is. But for a guy like you that, you know, came up pro wrestling in the 1970s, I mean, for you have gone through all that wildness and to get to where you are today, where the people are watching pro wrestling matches on YouTube instantaneously on your phone. It's a pretty amazing journey. Yeah, I mean, we, we did some great business, you know, with licensing and merchandising. I kind of wish the internet would have been around when we were, you know, Oh, yeah, for sure. Once that first Hulkamania red and yellow run took off, it was, it was pretty intense, you know, and that's with no internet, you know. Yeah, and just, just word of mouth. Yeah, I mean, just when you go to Detroit, you'd have Edsel Ford there and Iacocca in the front row. Or when you go to L.A., you'd have Gene Hackman and Brad Pitt and everybody sitting there. So it was like, <laughs> it was different, you know. If we go yeah. to New York, Blondie was always backstage and everybody. It was just, it was a, it was a circus. Andy Warhol, everybody was there. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How did they get the word out? Were they doing TV ads? Were they doing billboards, like radio? What did you guys do? Well, it was mainly radio and print back then. Mm. And the launch pin was at uh, WrestleMania 1 because I'd been out and I'd uh, done a few episodes of the A-Team with T. And I think I did three episodes and then they wanted me to come back the next year. They wanted to do the salt and pepper thing, you know, with me and T. And I just couldn't deal with it, man. T and George Papard were at each other's throats. They were, like, pulling me back and forth. You know, T's going, don't talk to him. And George Papard goes, oh, let me go over the lines with you. And I'm like... You know, I was being pulled, oh, no. pulled back and forth, and it was kind of uncomfortable, you know. But I did meet my agent, Peter Young, there because he was T's agent, so that's why I've been with him so long. And then You just ruined the A team for me. Now I know that George Papard and Mr. T didn't like each other. Oh, dude, they were at it full time. Now I'm so sad. <laughs> I can't watch old episodes now. Oh, my gosh. I'd be like, oh, who was the dick? Oh, you don't have to say. Oh, I don't know. That was I a rude really, question. I really don't know. I take it back. It I pity the fool, place. whoever it was. <laughs> I pity the fool. I pity the fool. Stop your jibber jabber. Bro, he was fucking amazing in Rocky Three. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, he was. He, he was amazing. He was terrifying. Yeah. Hey, woman. Since your man ain't got no heart, what you going to my apartment tonight? I'll show you a real man. There you go. What? What? Fuck you. That was, yeah, a, that was, that was a great team. That, that was good. Him doing the chin ups, like like he was a very convincing killer. Yeah, they did a good job in the ring, here? man. At WrestleMania one, um, I had a little bit of a problem with Piper and Orndorff back then, but they they uh, they were they ended up being cool about it. They wanted to kill him. <laughs> Who wanted to kill him? Piper, Paul, uh, Roddy Piper, and uh, Paul Orndorff, the two guys we wrestled. That guy, Piper. Right. Sure, I know Roddy. Piper and, and Orndorff. Because they, we hadn't had any celebrities come into our sport like that, you know. Oh, and they wanted to kill him. They wanted oh, yeah. to beat him up. Yeah, and so it was like a couple mad dogs. I was begging them, please, let's just get through this damn thing, you know. And, Did they go hard on him? Not real hard, but you know, T had a little, little bit of an amateur wrestling background, you know. The problem is, is when you're out there. You could do all the cardio you want. You could do all the working out you want. But something about your nerves will blow you sky high where you can't even get a breath. Mm. And, I mean, just standing on just the apron. Just adrenaline. Just, yeah, just standing on the apron. You know, I, I knew that uh, he would have a hard time with, with his nerves once we got out there. Mm. And so um, once he had that first little run the beginning of the match, and I got back in, I kept watching him on the apron. He was, he was hangdogging, you know. He mm. couldn't get his breath back, and it was just nerves. It wasn't that he wasn't in shape. It was the nerves that got the best of him. But he rallied around, and we did get through that. But um, it was interesting because he brought a lot to the table, man, a whole lot to the table. 
Oh yeah, after Rocky Three, he was a fucking superstar. Dude, he was a he was a major star from that A team and Rocky. He was on fire. Yeah, yeah, and he I, gave me a great rub, man. Me rubbing up against him made me a bigger star. Clearwater Beach called Hogan's Hangout. Right, Monday nights are are monster monster nights because we have karaoke there, right? And I've got a Mr. T guy. The kid's about six two. He's got all the, the jewelry on, of course, it's not the real stuff, and he's got the mohawk, and he looks a lot like tea, and he drives the van. <laughs> he's got the gray van with the red wing on the side. He drives the A-team van. I mean, you can see him at the Bucks games, at the Rays games. They've always got him on camera, but... That's a weird thing to stick with. Yeah, well, he's sticking with it, man. It works for him. That's hilarious. But he comes to our karaoke, and it's kind of funny when he walks in, the place goes crazy. There's something about those TV shows, those nostalgic TV shows. They they do make me happy. Going back and watching like an episode of like the A Team, just because it's it's like a capsule in time that it's never. There's never they're never gonna make shows like that again. Like th- that. There's never gonna be a Dukes of Hazard again. You know. There's never gonna be any of those shows. Like when you what you're watching is like a weird peek into a time before there was an internet, and where people were just a little goofier. They were just a little goofier. They, yeah. They they didn't need their entertainment to be so multi-layered. It didn't have to be Stranger Things. Oh, what's up? What show is this? It's the A-Team. Is this you and the A-Team? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. You got to nail him, Hulkster. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm fine. You, can you find out what year that was? Look at you. I can actually run. Come on, man. And there's the van. Oh, what? no. I'm sure they'll be all right. Yeah, but what's worse, them catching them or them not catching them? Like, even the <laughs> acting. Yeah. They're acting like someone pretending to be acting. Yeah. I think it's the directing. Like, how do you see that and go, that's it. Let's move <laughs> They're on. They're all on Coke. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood Budget. was all on Coke back then. <laughs> yeah. Budget. Hey, woman. See, your man ain't got no heart. Why don't you go into my apartment tonight? I'll show you a real man. There you go. What? What? Fuck you. 